good. You know, I think he always had that dream. He was already starting to throw the ball and play in sports at two with his older brother being a year older. He always, I think he wanted to keep pace with, with his older brother. Hey, no, 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 no! Uh, whatever his older brother could do, he wanted to do. I mean, he was being a year younger, he had to try a little harder, but I think that's probably where he got that competitive spirit. I heard other people tell me that he had the skill, and I just couldn't, gosh, I just couldn't believe it. It just seemed so, so unbelievable that I could have a son that could become pro at anything. Number five. And this I is like Ryan's it. first year of hockey. And it's I like March. it, I like it really a lot. This episode of Beginnings is presented by Melrose Credit Union. We're going from St. Paul down to uh, Roseville, Minnesota, my dad's golf course, Cedar Home Augusta, as we like to call. A joke in the family. He's a golf course superintendent there, and you know, I really didn't play as much golf as I probably wanted to growing up, you would think. You know, I'd be playing a ton because my dad, you know, had the golf course, and, and we did. We played a lot, but, um, you know, I was mostly focusing on whatever sport it was in season. You know, as soon as, as myself and my older brother were walking around, we were, we were playing some sport, whether it was hockey in the winter or throwing a football around in the fall and, and, and baseball in the spring. We made sure we, we tried to do it all when we were little kids. We're just pulling in now to my dad's golf course here. Our first rounds of golf was right here, so a lot of memories, and obviously it's been an important golf course for our family and my dad's job and, and making money to afford, you know, hockey equipment and, and sports equipment and, and the house and everything back home. So uh, we uh, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be the same without this course. What's up? Hi, hey, gentlemen. How are we doing? Very good. Good. My dad's been the golf course superintendent there ever since I'd known, and probably the first place I learned about work as a as a young adult. We uh, used to use him and his uh, teammates, actually, to uh, plant some flowers and uh, uncover the greens in the spring. We lay giant tarps on them. It was really where I, I got a good understanding of, you know, what my dad goes through every morning at 5.30 when he wakes up uh, and heads out the door. Uh, we often wonder in the family what was his first official job, and uh, I gotta tell you, Ryan's first official job ever was laying sod, and he did it one day. And that was his only job. He laid sod for one day, and I think that drove him to hockey. Anytime there was a game, he was ready to play, so hockey was always serious, and uh, football and everything else he did was always a little serious. When it came to labor, when Ryan was 14 and under mowing the yard, we had to check the yard after he got done mowing because he wouldn't do the backside. He'd do everywhere you could see and then skip a whole bunch and he'd say he's done. I'd give it my, my best shot and, and try and get away with get away with getting it done. And <laughs> yeah, a lot of shortcuts. But I learned eventually that shortcuts get you nowhere, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Took him a while, but he got it figured out. So now we're gonna head to the fire station. My dad is, uh, he's been a firefighter for over 20 years now. And um, we'd always, uh, you know, do Christmas parties up at the fire station and, you know, go up there and wash our cars and, and hang out on the fire trucks. And, you know, it's something today that, you know, it's, it's really proud to say that your dad's a firefighter. You don't understand that at a young age. You just, you just kind of, you know, going about your business. You know, your dad's a firefighter. But when you get older and you understand you know what's at stake and what he's putting uh you know he's putting his life on the line for for these people and and these families it's 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 quite amazing it's something to be you know that i'm i'm, I'm very proud of for sure i got 23 years on so ryan was probably just born when i signed on with the fire department and it, and it was a community uh, we had all of our christmas parties here uh, 
Um, they'd actually come up sometimes on his home with them and the wife was gone. He'd come up and they could sit in the station and you'd run to the call and the other guys would then end up taking care of them. Um, our other son uh, must have liked something about it, but he, he joined the police force. And um, uh, this is him coming now in this truck. This is my older brother, Colin. Uh, he's uh, a year older than me and, you know, we, we grew up together. And, you know, I, I, I can say we were probably best buds growing up together and we pretty much did everything together. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool for me to say that my dad's a firefighter and, and now my older brother's going to be a police officer. You know, it's quite an honor to, to have both those, uh, both those people in your family. And... You know, it's just, it's been a treat to, to see him grow all from the stages of, uh, you know, living out in the cul-de-sac every day after school, every day of the summer with all the neighborhood kids. It's been great to see him grow and mature and become a, become a really developed young man, especially in hockey. We were fortunate enough to win the state championship together. You know, he was a senior in high school, I was a junior, and we were both both defensemen on, on the blue line together. We weren't D partners, but we had some shifts together here and there, and you know, winning the state championship. You know, that's, that's something we dreamed about as, as kids growing up. You know, every year when the state tournament comes around, you know, you were, you were getting out of school, going to the XL Energy Center to watch the tournament, and, um, you know, to, we, we, we were just in awe when we, were, when we made it there to play and to win a championship together. It was awesome for us and, and awesome for our, our parents, too, you know, all the effort they put in. You are the 2006 High School Hockey Champions. Want to jump up in the truck? This probably doesn't go on first, though. No, last thing. Look at that, I already screwed up. <laughs> well, it's only 90 degrees today, right? Yeah. <sighs> All right, here he goes. All the young guys would be out there playing, and then one of the moms would pop out and say, hey, everybody, we've got uh, you know, cookies or ice cream. All the boys would drop what they were doing, but oftentimes there was one little boy that wasn't inside in the cool enjoying the snack, and that little boy was Ryan. He didn't want a break. This is where my parents' house is when I grew up. Uh, we live right in a cul-de-sac, and we have all the neighborhood kids come out, and play baseball and roller hockey, street hockey. And that's really where I developed, you know, uh, my competitiveness and my drive for, for sports started right, right in the cul-de-sac. This is the old garage. Look at this. This is, this is our, our all sports equipment. Everything you, you could need and want, you could probably find in here. And, you know, when we'd be playing street hockey, you just come in and there's probably tons of sticks of every which curve. You could just come and grab one and, and go hit the cul-de-sac up. There's some originals still in there. Yeah, yeah, you can see, I mean, look at the baseball bases. I mean, <laughs> gloves of every hand. It's, now we got lacrosse sticks, tennis rackets, football helmets. It just seems like, uh, you know, whatever we wanted to do that day, we could find in here. <laughs> this is my, uh, my beautiful mom, Patty. Uh, she's been, the best Thank mom you. ever. So, this is kind of where we've got a lot of memorabilia and photos, old posters. This is all our, our state championship pictures that were given to us. Here's uh, the Mr. Hockey Award. I won as a senior in high school. Got some state championship ring. I don't wear it too often, but it's definitely really cool to have. You just stayed competitive. I think you just had that drive that you wanted to go for it. You've had some great experiences with high school, making it to the state tournament and winning, and Frozen Four with college, and and you know now with pros, you know with playoffs, and hopefully there'll be a third ring to that collection with Stanley Cup. And yeah. <laughs> I think there's enough spot here for a little <laughs> Stanley Cup ring. Yeah. This here is my little brother. Quinn. Now, Quinny, he's probably probably my biggest fan, I would say, eh? Oh, yeah. What? So what now? You're a goalie, right? Yeah, I play goalie. And who's your favorite goaltender? Henrik Lundqvist. He's the best, right? Yeah, he's fun to watch. You've been to New York. What do you think of Madison Square Garden? Madison Square Garden is really cool. I really like the rink. Play is awesome to watch. Just seeing you. I remember watching your first goal. That was sick to see. <laughs> Out in front, big gun up.
This is my neighbor, uh, Jeff Gossage. Him and my dad were probably co-founders of the cul-de-sac sports, sports league, or whatever you want to call it. There were many days when all the young guys would be out there playing, and then one of the moms would pop out and say, hey, everybody, we've got uh, you know, cookies or ice cream or whatever <laughs> the snack might be. And so all the boys would drop what they were doing. They'd run into whatever house was serving the snack. But oftentimes, there was one little boy that wasn't inside in the cool enjoying <laughs> the snack. There was one little boy. He'd be sitting right over here on the curb. And if you listen very intently, you might hear a little little sniffling, a little whimpering. And that little boy was Ryan. And Ryan, he didn't want, he didn't want a break. You know, he didn't care if it was 90, 95 degrees and humid. He wanted to be out there and he wanted to play and he wanted to compete. And perhaps more than anything, he loved to win. When you think about Ryan and his track record through the years, whether it's with the Rangers or you know, with the Wisconsin Badgers in college or with Creighton in high school, the teams he played on always seemed to win, and that wasn't coincidental. I just loved watching Ryan grow, watching him develop and mature, and, and uh, he's such an easy guy to root for, and because he's such an easy guy to root for, we watch every game. <laughs> you know? He might have a night game, and we're all in our homes watching Ryan, and then when the game is done, we find out that, hey, it's been snowing. So, so we all go outside and we all start shoveling our driveways and it's 11 o'clock at night. And so all these dads who are shoveling their driveways get together out here in the cul-de-sac and we're all kind of leaning on our shovel and talking about Ryan's game <laughs> and the plays he made. We got the trophies here. You know, this is the hockey one. It's our only one in our school right now. I'm way up here. You see Coach Jimmy all went down on the ice and we were yeah. all laughing. You don't ever usually see the coach down there, but you know, he was almost more excited than we were. We're gonna head down to my high school, Creighton Durham Hall. My mom's dad, he graduated from Creighton, and then my mom's two brothers both played, you know, three sports there and graduated from there. You know, I had an uncle that was playing in the NFL when I was when I was growing up. Steve Walsh, he's my mom's uh, my mom's brother. Um, you know, we would get to see him come play the Vikings and at the Metrodome here in, in Minnesota. And, when he was with the Bears and, and, and Tampa Bay. You know, he was a huge, uh, huge reason why I chose the high school I did. And, and um, it just kind of was a little piece of family tradition of going to Creighton and graduating. Going into my senior year of high school, you know, I, I had a big decision to make whether I wanted to go join the the National Development Program in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and, and play with uh, Team USA guys, or to stay in Creighton and, and finish out there and, and graduate. You know, in the end, you know, my family is, is, is really important to me and what's most important to me. And, and um, you know, we all talked about the benefits of staying and, you know, graduating with my buddies and, you know, being able to win a state championship in baseball as a senior. Um, to win the Mr. Hockey Award, you know, that's something you, you dream about when you, when you first start playing high school hockey is trying to be the best player in the state of Minnesota as a high school kid, and, and I was up for the award and, and able to win it. And it meant a lot to, to my family that I, that I decided to stay and, and be with my friends and, and live at home one more year before you got to grow up, right? This is my uh, high school coach, Jim O'Neill. He, uh, he coached me in, in baseball and, and hockey for three years of varsity. He's, he's pretty much a legend at, at this school. Ryan developed into the entire package, really. You know, and he's the reason we won the, our only state championship, one of the main reasons. Here's the kid, one of the finest players that's ever played in the state. After my junior year, I had a chance to, to leave. Yeah. And I remember you and, and the rest of the coaches came out to my house. That was a harder conversation because Ryan had a lot of pluses, you know? You know, there's no question that uh, he probably would have developed, you know, those four or five months as a hockey player better with USA Hockey or whoever. But really what I wanted to sell him on was just, you know, you'd have a foundation in life. And, and this place gives you that. You know, and I told Ryan, I said, you know, after Three months of college, you know, you're gonna be right back where those other guys are. 
We got the trophies here. You know, this is the hockey one. It's our only one in our school right now. I'm way up here in the back row there, in here, and then you see Coach Jimmy all went down on the ice, and we were all yeah. laughing. You don't usually see the coach down there, but you know, he was almost more excited than we were. Raiders head coach Jim O'Neill. This was the baseball one my senior year, you know, my last season of playing baseball to win a state championship just, you know, was the ultimate ending to my, to my career. This is the Creighton Hall of Fame, you know, dates back, way back when the school began. In 1927, yeah. You see Paul Molitor, my uncle Steve Walsh, and then lower left is, is Chris Winkie when he was playing quarterback for Florida State. On right there is, is the newest big name, Joe Maurer, who's a big hometown hero here for the Minnesota Twins. And um, then you see the who's next with the question mark there, and, and that's just that's just kind of the, the message that's sent here and I hope to continue that tradition. You got four guys that uh, were just solid individuals here, and not only were good on the athletic field, but were really just uh, outstanding people in the hallways, in the community, in the classroom, and, and good teammates and classmates and students to their teachers. So, you know, and, and Ryan was, you know, he's next. Here we are walking into the old uh, high school home rink for the Creighton Dermall Raiders. Pretty cool. They made some uh, some banners of our of the hockey history of the school right up there. We got the big state champions 2006 banner there. You know, they made a banner a banner for me winning the Mr. Hockey Award. And this is the. Uh, this is the poster, you know, my decision to come back and, and play at Creighton. So, you know, it's just that uh, it's nice. It's nice they put this up here, and you know, it means a lot. You know, knowing I came back for my senior year, and to see them put this up, you know, I, ho I hope kids just just get a feel that they can stay here and, and stay in the league and stay close to home and, and still make their dreams come true. So, you know, this, these are your roots, and this is where you you, know, you started the game and where all your, those childhood memories are, are from. And, it started right here for me, and you know I was able to, to grow as a player and, and get an opportunity to go into college. And, and now with the, with the New York Yankees, it's, it's been a heck of a ride, and it all started right here. What's the Rangers goal song? Oh, it's the. What is it? Hey, hey. Oh, that one. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. I can hear it now. Hey, hey. <laughs> This is something that you know doesn't cost any money to play. You know, you can come out here with a hockey stick and ball, and you don't have to rent out the ice or have a coach. And you know, you can just kind of create things on your own and learn different things. You, know, you just come out here with 15 other kids and you spend your your afternoon and evening out here. And then when the sun went down, you went in and went to bed and, and did it all again the next day. It was, you know, it was our little uh, our home sports arena. I don't think any uh, this fame has gotten to him. Ryan has just stayed Ryan. Um, he's Ry Ry to us. What's the Rangers goal song for? Yeah. Oh, it's the. Uh... <laughs> what is it? Hey. hey. Oh, that one. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. I can hear it now. Hey. Hey. He may be celebrity status on the ice at the garden, but here he still has to. Cut the grass. <laughs> Half of it. Half of it. <laughs> yeah, the Ryan method. There you are. There it is. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Number five. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> My uncle Steve, you know, playing 12 years in the NFL, you know, has told me numerous times. You're going to be playing hockey for the next, you know, 20, 25 years, hopefully, if you stay healthy. But then you've got a whole life ahead of you after that, and it's the relationships that you build, the experiences that you have that you have to take with you when you're done playing hockey. And 
and make sure you give back to the people that helped get you to where you are. I think we were lucky enough, fortunate enough to give him opportunity. He took those opportunities and he worked for me. We all wish the best for our kids and you know, who knows what, what happens tomorrow, but hopefully we're in the middle of the next successful season. I think there's plenty more for me to improve on and, and to get better personally. And, and um, you know, I know as a team, guys are, you know, excited about our future and, and know that it's, it's still not going to be easy. And there's, you know, there's always 29 other teams out there chasing after the cup. And, and we have to work just as hard, if not harder, than a lot of players on those teams in order to, to accomplish our ultimate goal of winning the cup. Hopefully the Rangers take a great run for the cup. I'd love to see the cup here in Arden Hills, travel around the city here. That'd be unbelievable for our dad. Doesn't get much better as a family, definitely not much better. You know, then, then marriage and grandkids and all that stuff we can force them into and <laughs> we can put the cup behind <laughs> on that stuff. We can wait on that a bit. <laughs>